When AMD moved GCN 1, 2 and 3 GPUs into the dark warehouse marked legacy support back in 2021, I was a bit upset. At the time, graphics cards on both the new and used market were getting scarce and prices were escalating. If you'd followed my advice and bought yourself an old but gold GPU like the R9 290X back then, hearing that you wouldn't be getting new drivers anymore would be like getting rescued from the Titanic by the Lusitania. The answer to your driver woes back then was a Mername Zone, aka Nimes, a series of third-party modded drivers that has the potential to extend the life of your old AMD GPU for as long as the developer keeps on developing them. In 2023, now that the shortage is mostly over and the used market is looking a lot healthier, is Nimes still the answer? I last looked at Nimes in a dedicated video about a year ago, but I continued to use them for my AMD R9 graphics card reviews throughout 2022. While I didn't spot any major differences in performance in most games back then, there were exceptions. Since I made that video, a few things have changed. As well as the aforementioned market recovery that means newer cards are actually available, energy prices have been driven up in many parts of the world, making older, higher TDP GPUs much less attractive than they were in the past. Also, although officially these 200 and 300 series GPUs received their legacy driver status in mid-2021, there was an update mid-2022 though its purpose doesn't seem to have been bringing any new game optimizations. Still, for me, the question remains, do owners of legacy GCN cards see any benefit from the latest Nimes drivers over the final official driver release? To investigate this, I'll be testing this MSI 4GB R9290X using both driver sets in 9 games. These titles are all either recent releases or have released significant updates in the last few months that might benefit from a driver update. I'm also testing this Sapphire 4GB RX 480. Although this card is still officially supported by AMD and can run on the latest drivers, I did receive a few questions after my previous video about whether newer cards benefit from Nimes, and although I'm a year late, I still wanted to answer the question. My test system is the new 2023 update to the moderately priced gaming PC. I've upgraded the motherboard to a Gigabyte B550 Gaming XV2 and the CPU to a Ryzen 5 5600X running at 4.65 GHz. I've also added a second pair of DDR4 sticks, bringing the RAM up to 32 GB of DDR4 3600CL16. I've always used a more modest PC for benchmarking, and at current prices the MPG PC is worth around about £600. The 5600X is no slouch and will not bottleneck either graphics card in these tests, and while I found the extra RAM isn't necessary yet, it does give me access to four memory ranks rather than the two I had before. The PC port of Sony's Spider-Man Remastered launched a couple of months after the 22.5.2 legacy drivers, so was a prime candidate for whatever enhancements Nimes might bring. Alas, that difference amounted to pretty much nothing. At 1080 medium, the 290X can churn out about 68 FPS on average and 35 FPS 1% lows, regardless of whether using the official drivers or the modded ones. God of War's results actually see a kind of regression, though not a huge one. At 1080 original settings, the legacy driver set hits 52.6 FPS on average, whereas installing Nimes actually sees that average drop by less than 2 frames. This reduction probably comes from the significantly lower 1% scores, dipping as low as 40 FPS compared to 45 on the legacy drivers. Completing my Sony trilogy is Uncharted 4, a, a game I got for free with my Ryzen 5700X and which you'll probably see more of in my GPU reviews this year. At 1080 medium there is once more a margin of error difference between average FPS, both coming a frame or so short of the 60fps mark. 1% lows are closer to 2 frames apart, this time slightly in favour of Nimes. Forza Horizon 5 again represents a tiny, almost unnoticeable regression moving to Nimes from Legacy. 
but as this is the first built-in benchmark I've tested so far, it does mean that it can't really be dismissed as run-to-run -run variants. The average difference is only 1.3 frames, stretching to 2 when enabling TAA, which by the way is the only way I know of to fix the glitch that turns your license plate black. So far, Nimes might not have really sold itself, but there are a couple of instances of games which really show why these drivers exist. The obvious example that I explored last year is Halo Infinite. This year I tested purely the open world campaign section that has become my standard benchmark run for the game, and the legacy drivers only managed 9 FPS. That's not a typo. Using Nimes sees a radical improvement, hitting almost 45 FPS on average, and this is a problem for the legacy drivers in more ways than one. You see, last year's results were also wildly different, with the older 21.5.2 legacy driver set also delivering pathetic numbers. The Nimes drivers I used in that test were from December 2021, which begs the question, if these new legacy drivers are from June 2022, Shouldn't they have fixed performance in Microsoft's flagship title by now? After reviewing the capture footage more closely, I had to rewrite this section of the video. On the face of it, Cyberpunk 2077 gains about 10 FPS from Nimes over Legacy, but it's not quite as simple as that. It might not be apparent after YouTube has had its way with the compression, but when looked at side by side, the Nimes footage is noticeably softer. I have double checked, resolution scaling and FSR were disabled in the menu, but for whatever reason, the game seems to have ignored that. I'm gonna have to call foul on this one. I've picked a new test run for Witcher 3 Remastered through Novigrad, and it's a bit of a ball ache. I pretty much have to do an extra pass at the beginning so that the game can get all its shaders and other resources cached. Otherwise, it just stutters into oblivion. Still, the proper pass averages close to 60 FPS with lows in the 30s on Legacy. Switching to Nimes doesn't improve averages by much, but 1%s actually climb to 46. Fortnite isn't an ideal title for comparative benchmarks, but the results managed to be pretty consistent. Averages remained basically identical, switching between official and modded drivers, and while 1%s are improved on Nimes, that could just be attributed to the game's ever-present shader compilation stutter. Finally, I didn't expect much here. All of the other titles in this list have been released or substantially updated since the R9290X was marked as Legacy, but GTA V's story mode really hasn't changed all that much in years. As you might expect, averages are less than 3% apart. 1% lows are about 10% better on the Legacy drivers, and while I do keep the runs as close to one another as possible, that delta could be attributed to variances. Except for in specific titles, the R9290X doesn't see much performance benefit from using Nimes over Legacy, and that situation is mostly unchanged from last year. What's telling is that the Legacy drivers that released after that previous video still have the same major issue as the preceding set. Halo Infinite chugged along at unplayable frame rates in Legacy 21.5.2, just like it does on 22.6.1. When these new legacy drivers were launched by AMD, the developer of Nimes commented that these weren't actually new drivers at all, and were instead a repack of an older set of Windows Update drivers, and in their testing wasn't stable on GCN1 based cards. Unfortunately, I don't have any GCN1 cards on hand right now to verify this, but I didn't experience any instability with either driver set in my GCN2 testing. Admittedly, this was just a 9 game run at stock speeds. Am I saying Nimes drivers are a waste of time? Far from it. Although Nimes' website does tout many benefits of their drivers over official ones, I'm not really well versed enough to test those features out. The one I am capable of testing isn't really listed as a feature, but via the included utilities, it is possible to activate smart access memory on graphics cards which don't officially support it. I was able to try out that feature on the R9 290 last year, and found it made a barely appreciable difference in those tests, 
though, as Sam's performance increase isn't universal, it could just be that those particular games simply don't take advantage of it. I wanted to retest the feature this year, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't get it to work on the R9 290X, nor the RX 480. I have changed the motherboard from an MSI B450 to a Gigabyte B550 in that time, so it's entirely possible that that might have something to do with it. As I mentioned earlier, some people have asked whether there was any benefit to using Nemez drivers on newer GPUs that are still officially supported, so I ran the RX 484GB through the same test suite. The results were less interesting. Performance in Spider-Man is roughly equal between driver sets. God of War once more loses a few frames, dipping below 60 on average with Nemez. Uncharted 4 and Forza Horizon 5 are pretty much even. Halo Infinite has no performance issues on the official drivers, so once more is basically the same on Nemez. Cyberpunk performs about the same on the two driver sets, and everything else is also within the margin of error. Unless you have better luck than I did enabling smart access memory, there doesn't seem to be many good reasons to go through the rigmarole of installing modded drivers if you can simply download up-to-date official ones directly from AMD. For me, the reason that Nemez drivers are so important, and why I'm glad they exist, is for those who can't do that. Who knows when AMD will decide to add a few more lines to the list of unsupported GPUs, and when a new title or update to a live service game will suddenly tank performance on hardware that was previously up to the task. While so far I haven't seen any other issues like Halo Infinite on AMD, I have seen them on Nvidia. Maxwell 2 cards in the GTX 900 series have a similar problem with performance in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and in my recent GTX 980 video I found that it even has the same single digit FPS issue in Halo. As there is no equivalent to Nemez for Team Green, the only solution is, bizarrely, rolling back to older drivers. Clearly this issue of outdated or poorly programmed drivers isn't going away, and for older GPUs there's not much incentive for AMD or Nvidia to fix it themselves. If you are stuck with an older Radeon, either because you can't afford an upgrade or you're holding out to see if things improve, I'd say that you don't need Nemo's drivers until you really need them. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.